Hello everyone, Titanic Spider here, back with another 40 minute treaty boom, and today we are going over the Italians. I have three deck variations depending on your preference. They are all very similar, so let me go over the differences first. The first deck has a free Lombard shipment in Age 2. The more Lombards you have out, the faster the exchange rate of resources you put into it, as well as less build time for the Architects. The second deck I removed the Lombard card in Age 2 and added improved building hit points in Age 4 for stronger forward walls as you push and make your walls for free with the Architects. In the final third deck, I added a free Basilica Wagon card. The card combined with Church card in Age 2 allows you to get three Basilicas. Having extra XP generation will allow for more shipments sent by Age 40 uh, by 40 minutes, allowing for potential advantages for with stronger units. I don't use this deck too often because the Basilica is far larger than your ordinary Church kit and can cause a lot of space problems later in the boom phase. For this video, I will be using the first deck with the free Lombard. The stronger walls are nice, but the Architect build walls so fast and f for free, I'm not too worried about having stronger walls. I will go over some of the unique Italian cards during the guide so we can get right into it. You're going to want to start by taking your Architect and having building a house as well as a marketplace. You start with three villagers, which will gather your crates, and you're going to move them over to the hunts. I, my personal preference is to build a second Architect right at the start, so I send all my new villagers over to the gold mine to get the 200 gold required for the new architect. After you've gathered the extra 200 gold, you're gonna need an extra 50 gold because you need to build, you need another 50 gold for hunting dogs. Your architect will have plenty of time to finish the house before you house yourself with the villagers. So you'll still have about two in production once he finishes that house. But again, make sure you send all new villagers over to the gold mine. Your first shipment is going to be Gold Trickle, followed by the Team Lombard card. I, I personally like to have the Lombard card, even if you're playing alone because it does give you extra or it does give you an increased resource exchange rate with the more lombards you have out since we will be building another architect I'm going to go ahead and use this architect to shift click over in a Lombard this way. Once I queue up the next architect, I can have him go directly there because this one should be done with the marketplace by then. Keep an eye on your resources because you're going to want to get that architect queued up as soon as possible even if you have a little bit of idle tc time with the gold so again once you're done with that you're going to want to make sure you gather an extra 50 gold as well as set your tc to send the architect over to the next lombard once you got those 50 you can go ahead and move all your villagers over to food Since the TC does send the architect over, just like a villager, you're going to want to make sure you switch the villager back over the TC back over to resources. One unique thing about Italians is for every upgrade you send, you get a free settler. So you're going to want to go ahead and send all your upgrades as soon as possible, especially since 75 food for this gets you an extra settler. That's 25 less for the village for a settler. So go ahead and send those in age one as soon as you can. But because of being able to send those, before, because you're getting free villagers with every upgrade, it's more likely you're going to house yourself, so you're going to want to make sure you keep ahead of that with your architects and build plenty of houses. We're going to be aiming for a population space of 20, which is a total of 18, which is a total of 16 villagers because you have two total architects. Once 
once you have the Lombard art out, you can go ahead and start investing if you want. But I wouldn't recommend it as you want to make sure you can get to age two. Once you get into age two, then you then you you'll be more free to go ahead and start investing your your resources. As I said before, you can find yourself house capped because of the free villagers you get. That's okay. But when you age up, you know get get one free settler and one Lombard wagon. With this deck, you're only going to need to build a total of two Lombards with your Architects. So go ahead and switch, send another one over there. Because you're going to build two. You get one free one from the Team Lombard. You get one free one from Age 2. As well as you get one free one from Aging Up. Now that we got Age 2 started, we can go ahead and start investing once we have 300 resources. By investing our food as well as gold, you shouldn't have to be able, you shouldn't have to touch wood at all until later on in the boom. Go ahead and separate your villagers as needed to get enough food and gold to go into age three. As stated before, you do get free villagers for, each, for every upgrade you send, so as long as it's not preventing you from aging up or preventing you from building, building villagers, go ahead and send those upgrades. Just keep an eye on your Lombard to ensure that it's constantly investing. Once that comes out, go ahead and get the fourth Lombard down and go ahead and send the free Lombard that you get with that. After they build the that Lombard, you're going to go ahead and get the Basilica built up. You can also invest wood as you will not be really be needing it unless you're doing upgrades. So go ahead and send that as well because that will go back into food and gold to, to allow you to progress towards further aging up later. As soon as you age up, you're going to age up with Covered Wagon. You're going to use your Explorer to build the next TC, so you're going to want to make sure while investing you don't overinvest wood because you're going to need the wood to build the house, to build the TC. The next you're going to send the Church Card because once this Basilica is built, you'll be able to have an option to enable a, a second Basilica, giving you double the experience. Don't forget to invest as you go.
keep an eye on the Basilica, because once it's done, you want to make sure you get that shipment going as soon as possible. Go ahead and build all your TCs. Go ahead and build your extra basilica. Then you can go ahead and start making the houses you're going to need later. Don't forget to keep keep your town center constantly going as well as keep your Lombards fully stocked for exchanging. At this point you can be a little more lenient with how much you put in as you will be, have plenty of villagers going as well. Again, don't forget, any upgrades you're going to get later will also in increase the amount of villagers you have now, so go ahead and send them, as long as it's not hurting you. The sooner you can get the villagers, the sooner you can gather resources. Just make sure you have plenty of food as well as population space to continually build with all your town centers. Next upgrade you're going to want to get is the Advanced Lombard for better exchange rates. If you want, you can go ahead and send the, the experience gain, but I wouldn't recommend it because you're going to want to get into H4 as soon as possible in order to get the factory, the one factory wagon you can get. Once you're able to go into age four, go ahead and go into age four. You're going to send the 1,000 experience tomes. Because you do have architects, you will need more than 100 population space built with the houses. So go ahead and do that. And you're going to save this shipment for the robber barons in age four. Again, you don't want to stop constantly investing. Being able to invest food and gold will allow you to invest the wood as well. With all the Lombards down, it will be investing a lot faster, especially with that shipment we sent. So make sure you're constantly keeping, keeping on top of it, because it will go a lot faster. I would recommend setting one of them to a control group, this way you can easily jump back to it. So you need age four, go ahead and set the robber barons, get some villagers over to gather those experience crates. Again, never stop doing the Lombards. At this point, once you have enough houses that you're comfortable with, you can go ahead and use those architects to start building your farm as well as your estates because you those upgrades will also get you free villagers. 
Next upgrade you're going to want to do is going to be this one, which converts even faster on the Lombards. So keep an eye on the Lombards, just keep them going. Once you get that Robber Barons out, you're going to set it to wood, because as you can see, you got plenty of people on wood and gold, or on food on and gold. So you're going to want to get the wood this way. It's easier to keep up with the, the Lombards going. Next shipment you're going to go ahead and send is going to be food and gold shipments. Again, keep an eye on the, the Lombards because it goes pretty damn fast. Again, make sure you get that factory set up. As well as all the factory shipments, well, all the factory upgrades will give you villagers as well. So as long as you can afford it and keep the, the Lombards transferring, go ahead and send those as well. The only reason why I'm going ahead and sending that the experience shipment now is because I'm behind on food, so it's okay to send the gold to catch up. When you go into age 5, you're going to go ahead and send the chest of 2,000 coin. At this point, all new villagers can start going to the, to the trees to chop them down. Make sure once they're done with the gold mines, they also go to, directly to the trees. You're going to want to clear up as much space as you possibly can in the back line, because that's where, since the basilicas and the lumbars take up so much space, you're going to need to clear that out to build your the rest of your estates as well as mar uh, farms. Again, keep an eye on the Lombards. They will be transferring a lot faster at this point. As soon as you age up, make sure you grab a couple of villagers, go gather that gold. At this point, I use villagers to build the capital because it'll build a lot faster so you can get those upgrades, as well as your architects should still be busy building you markets and, and estates. Again, make sure you're focusing on the, the economy upgrades at this point. Food first, then gold. Don't forget your Lombard, you want to constantly be gathering with that. Also, all your upgrades that you get still give you a free villager. Just keep an eye on your population space, just like from before. You don't want to you don't want to run out of population space because you do have those extra architects, so you want to make sure you have a little more than 100. Even if you have a bunch of villagers queued up, if you get a free villager from an upgrade, it will not carry over you cannot over pop over the the 99 limit so make sure you keep an eye on that, that you don't have idle tcs and once you reach the limit of villagers you can go ahead and start building your the rest of your architects again keep an eye on your your lombards as they will be 
going through the the investments very quickly but at the same time make sure while you're doing that you're not wasting your resources that you need to get the upgrades Again, don't forget the lumbards. You can hold shift and press the button and if you have the resources to do it, it'll deposit 1500 instead of 300. At this point, since we're capped, even though it says it can deliver an extra villager, you don't need it because you still cannot overpop on it. If you want to transfer more villagers over to the gathering of food and gold on the mills and estates sooner, you can go ahead and click this and it'll allow you to, to build it with the villagers instead of the architects. The architects can still help you do it, but you can it just costs you a little extra to go ahead and build it sooner if you're trying to switch over. Again, most important thing is constantly check your lumbards because it will, it will be going down very quickly. Since we do have a shipment for an infinite shipment of the bombard, you gotta wanna make sure you do upgrade the, the bombard in the factory as well. As soon as you have all those built, all the estates and mills built, you're gonna wanna begin building your forward base wherever that may be or if you're playing solo and you want to build it all across the entire map make sure you go ahead and go do that i'm not going to do the entire side of my base but i'm going to at least sort of set it up once they are done with that they can come ahead go ahead and go back here and make sure you rebuild all the houses that you need to get to the total population space as well as the experience that you'll get for building them.
once you build your forward base, you're gonna go ahead and start building the walls. But since they upgraded this shipment right here, the Venetian Arsenal, you're gonna wanna make sure you build that as well. They increase the ore range that it gets, which will increase your, your production rate of all your military buildings. I went ahead and did the average time it takes to build, the uh, build military with and without it, and I will put it up on the screen so you can see that in just a second. But in my opinion, it's going to be great help because three to four second difference is going to be massive when it comes to an actual fight. The units we're going to be using from, from infantry are going to be the typical halberdier, musketeer, as well as the skirmisher that the Italians get, so you're going to want to upgrade all three of those. You're going to want to upgrade both the cavalry that you get, and you want to do the the three typical artillery, the horse artillery, the cavalry, and as well as the mortar. The skirmisher costs more gold than it does food, so you might want to put more on gold than you do on on food. This way it levels out later on. But it's going to be personal preference depending on who you're up against, up against and what combination that they're using. But you might find yourself running lower on gold since you do have a higher food gather rate than you do a gold gather rate. Once you have all your economic shipments sent, you're going to want to go ahead and make sure you get the arsenal card for the increased arsenal upgrades. You want to get the Venetian arsenal to increase your production, as well as you're going to want fencing school, riding school, and Freemasons. Freemasons are going to help you set up a forward base as soon as possible. This way you can build it faster with the architects, especially since they're free. And then after that, you can start working on the rest of your upgrades. Keep an eye on, on the gold in the Lombard, because since it's going to take a lot of gold to do the upgrades, you don't want to run low and end up not doing any exchanges. The next upgrade I'm going to get, I'm going to go ahead and get the Venetian Arsenal. This way I can start placing the arsenals down so you can see just what the aura does. And you're going to want to try and put them with your buildings as well. Don't forget to also get your your tower early on. This way you can make sure you get the up, to upgrade before the fight starts.
another unique thing about the Italians are going to be these units right here. The Lancers, the, the units that you can send from the Basilica. They are treated just like shipments, so be careful when you're sending them, because if you can send a shipment but you got one of these guys in production, it's going to put the shipment on hold, so make sure you're not in need of a shipment while you're sending them. Now I'm going to go ahead and send these. I like to start with at least three Lancers and sometimes send some guards as well. As you can see, all these units are going to take 300 of every single resource. Whatever, save that for later. Alright, so as you can see, if I hold Alt, you can see the, the circle that it gives. It's not a very large circle, but the original circle, it prevented you from building, putting too many buildings in it as it would prevent, as it would prevent uh, travel from, from the buildings to the, the field. So they increase the size, this way you can leave a little gap. I could have built the, them closer, but this is fine. As you can see, I got at least four in there. The good thing about these units from the Basilica is that they heal when they stand still over time as well as they will absorb damage for the units that are around them. So you're going to want to make sure you get some of them out as you send them, or as you can. You don't want to overpopulate with them. They do have a lot of health, they do have a lot of damage, but they will take up a lot of population space. So you want them out so that the rest of your units will survive longer, but you don't want to have too many of them. So now I've got the guards as well as some lancers, which is okay. To demonstrate the the speed of which that these build, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna go ahead and delete this for now because it didn't cost me anything to to make it, so it's quite all right. But I'm gonna select one barracks in the field, as you can see, that's in the field, and one barracks out of the field. And if you watch down here in the bottom left, you can see the the rate at which they they build it's not much but it can make a big difference when it comes to battle As you can see it'll be done about three to four seconds faster than the other musketeer will
once you're at house cap you can go ahead and send those villagers towards the, you can send those architects towards the front to start gathering trees gathering wood because they can gather wood but they can't gather on the they cannot gather on the estates or the market or the mills so you're going to want to send them there just just like the lancers the guards can also absorb damage If you want, at this point, you can go ahead and start with some Lombards you want to send through the factory if you want. I usually don't, but I would start with at least three Lancers, four Horse Artillery, and four Culverines, and the rest would be a mix of the Skirmisher as well as the Musketeers. I usually send about 10, 10 skirmishers, the rest is going to be musketeers. Or if you want, you can get a couple more of the lancers out, a couple more of the guards out if you'd like, a couple of the, the, the skirmishers. The reason why I like to use them is because this card right here allows the skirmisher, gives them more damage, and they will prioritize what they counter. We're running out of time, so I'm going to go ahead and and get everything sent. You're gonna send these two, which will give you your overpop on top of the units you're sending out, as well as you're gonna to wanna to make sure you get your Minutemen coming out. Normally I'd have an F a couple extra walls at this point, but it's not a big deal. Uh, at this point, you're gonna go ahead, you wanna make sure you have at least one training card. It would be nice to have the, the fencing school as well as the, the riding school, which you would have if you played with the three basilica card but this is going to set us behind at the same time you could also have the the ar extra arsenal upgrade as well as the freemasons if you went with the three went with the three church cards but that's okay not going to hurt us you're not you're not too far behind most people as you can see we're going to have all the units out i'm not going to take the time to to set all this up because i spent more most of my time explaining stuff but as you can see with a, it's a little shaky start, a couple of mistakes here and there. We're going to have at least 205k at the start. Could be better. Not a big deal. See, 205 going into battle with a nice overpop army. 